morning, Suzanne. Good morning, Holly. So good to have you here from Masterful Musicians. How long have you been uh, book, booking? Booking, yes. Six musicians. years. Amazing. What got you into this? Well, um, our son, our younger son, is a master classical guitarist, okay. and he kept wanting help with gigs, and I kept saying no because I'd managed his life for 20 years and I didn't want to do it anymore. Right. And then we met so many of the musicians and the professors at BU that were all saying the same thing, wow. that they needed help tracking, contracting, protecting themselves, and ensurance that the client got what they needed. Mm -hmm. Wow, and that's so interesting, I, through DU, what a yes. fun group. Well, they have an entrepreneurial office and oh. they really encouraged me to give this a try. Good, how exciting. So you work with a lot of brides and grooms booking live music. What common mistakes do you see brides and grooms making when they're trying to book live musicians for their event? They often think that they need to have far more music and musicians than they do. They're not aware of the room size or the dynamics or the fact that grandma really wants to speak to her niece she hasn't seen and that having overly loud music or too many instruments yeah. is going to keep um, the flow of the event and cause people to raise their voices rather than just enjoying the music and um, being part of the event. That brides are not usually for ceremony, cocktail art. It's not a show. Right. It is their event and right. we're there to support it. Right. Okay. So you're supporting the bride and groom looking wonderful, yes. not taking over the show. Never. So you don't want a group that, that dominates, that is so great that it upstages the bride and groom. Exactly. You want we something want, that complements them. Yes, and actually uh, fulfills the vision that they would like, but they've never done this before, and they want it to be so magnificent that they can over-magnify. <laughs> right, got it, got it, that's great. What is the best tip you have for a couple planning a wedding? Um, sit down and really think about what kind of music and what kind of instruments makes their hearts happy. That, okay. that this is their coming together and they should choose anything from steel drums mm -hmm. to oboe. Um, uh -huh. But it should be something that makes them feel special. Awesome, that is great. Uh, what don't couples know about what it takes to, how far in advance they need to plan to have live musicians or special songs? That was another okay, question special, I had, like special, special songs. Special songs, um, we often get, often, almost every wedding would like a special request. Right. And for th instruments like guitars, that isn't as much of an issue if it's a pop song. But transcribing a, um, a fully orchestrated country western song into a string trio takes about 12 to 15 hours of actual work. They have to break that song apart into melody, tunes, harmony, and rhythm, and make it work for three instruments rather than maybe four dominant instruments and 11 that you don't really hear behind the scenes. Right. And it's my job to listen to what the client wants right. and literally tell them, I'm sorry, that song's going to suck as right. a string trio. Right. May I suggest an alternate set of instruments or an alternate song, right. um, but it usually takes three months, two to three months to get a song transcribed by a professional and get it to the musicians in time for them to rehearse it. How much time before for them to rehearse it? It usually literally is about the two weeks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Our musicians are working full time as musicians. They can read music quickly, they get together usually once before a wedding right. and run through all the songs, how many people are walking, right. how long is the aisle, um, does grandma, is grandma on a walker? Is she right. going to take longer? What about your uh, little ring bearers and your flower girl? Are they going to bail and do we need, you know, like melt down somewhere down the aisle right. and we need to keep playing until everybody gets to where they're supposed to be? Right, right. Those are, that's good questions. Had so not those, thought of that. Yeah, so there's all these little things that we want to be prepared for uh -huh. so that the performance is seamless. Awesome. What questions should couples be asking that they don't know to ask? That they don't know to ask. They need to ask, is this an appropriate amount of music? They do not have, they, I often get requests for 20 minutes of music uh -huh. because they don't realize that it's not just the five songs they're gonna play during the ceremony. Right. 
they're gonna our musicians are gonna play 30 minutes beforehand where the right. dancers are being seated. Right, right. All Great of music. their yeah, all of their special songs, mm -hmm. um, family songs, family favorites, the parents love song, all these things that we can build into a ceremony. Uh -huh. They have no idea that we can make it that personalized. Uh -huh. And then another 10 or 15 minutes. Then there's usually our musicians have to get up and move to the cocktail hour. Not always. But many of the times, that is going to take a certain amount of minutes. And so our, our clients have no idea on the timeline how long it takes our people to get to the top of the mountain mm -hmm. with all their gear, right. their sheet music, their music stands, their actual instruments, lighting sometimes. Get set up, be prepared for their, their guests as they arrive, and then make it follow through right into the reception. Right, right, right. And so those are questions that I wish our clients knew to ask. Right. Never do. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, if it's your first time planning yes. events, you don't understand the timeline. So the, and so they don't understand how the pricing is structured. Right, and right. So I, it is my job to try to explain why all these things cost what they do. Right, right. That makes perfect sense. And then what about for the reception music? We do a lot of reception music, but we also work a lot with DJs. Uh -huh. And so um, it depends on the size of the wedding party uh -huh. and how many guests. I will often recommend a DJ mm -hmm. if they love a variety of music that a string quartet or a quintet is not going to be able to cover in a right. beautiful way. Right. Um, my goal is for the client to get what the wedding that they they really want, and not what someone else puts in their mind. Right. So you're um, you're more uh, classical musicians and less rock bands. Less rock bands, although we have several. We do bluegrass, we uh -huh. do steel drum, we do island music, um, but less of the large reception bands. Unless a client is going to have anywhere from two to three hundred guests, mm -hmm. chances are both their budget and the space that they are using, a huge band for the reception, all you're going to hear is the band. Right. And then people, and you were mentioning earlier, even during the reception music, you wanted people to be able to have conversations. Exactly. And we do a lot of weddings and uh, dinner music that may be for 60 guests and under. Mm -hmm. And our musicians will switch instruments because, mm -hmm. like I said, most of these people play more than one. Right. They all have their master's degree. Right. Um, they will switch instruments from like a jazz guitar to jazz guitar and upright bass, right. add a saxophone or a keyboard. And then we have a little music. jazz combo, right? That we makes sense. We have a small combo that still encourages people to visit and celebrate as well as dance, yeah. but it is not. We're not trying to recreate a club scene. Right, right, right. Because that, so, yeah. Uh, many clients don't realize how many different generations are going to be represented at their right. celebration, and they're only thinking of their friends and their peer group instead of the entire picture. Interesting. So you need mu music that uh, complements multiple age groups, not just your peer group is what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. We had one beautiful bride. She wanted all reggae music all the time. And I love reggae music and we can provide reggae music. But you really want to put in a couple of jazz standards, right, something right. from the 80s, something from the 90s. People that, that you know, your, your smallest sister and your great grandmother can enjoy right. something at some point during the evening because right. you are gifting a lot of this to your guests. Right, right. That's fabulous. How wonderful. Uh, what's the most unusual wedding you've ever done? <laughs> We've done a lot of unusual weddings. Yeah. We've done an all Beatles all the time wedding that we oh, supported a very large production company. Uh -huh. um, it was called Starkey Productions at the time and they brought us in with basically a miniature orchestra with vocals uh -huh. and they had something like uh, I'm thinking 16 bridesmaids and groom, groomsmen wow. that actually stood on risers in the Seawall Grand Ballroom. Wow! They also had a magnificent uh, cover band which was not from us but they were magnificent uh -huh. and it, they had um, like $150,000 worth of flowers hanging from the ceiling. Wow! And we fun. came in with this little tiny part and I actually got to go to the rehearsal because most of our musicians that were playing were actually playing the symphony that night. Oh wow! So for the rehearsal, I actually went and had to time how many sets of groomsmen and bridesmaids, the attendants, were coming down. Really long aisle. Uh -huh. We had violinists at the bottom and the top of the stairways greeting people and walking them in. Oh, wow. And then the entire wedding. And 
the family was hilarious. Oh, they were yay. so much fun. And I'm literally with a stopwatch going and writing all this down so that our Wonderful. musicians would know how to loop the music right. and finish it out within a few seconds of each other. Right, 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 right. If you have so that was an bomb. unusual one. That's we've all, interesting. Yeah, we, we've also done the steel drum and the acoustic guitar uh -huh. recently for Wendy Bath yeah. um, at the Western Westminster. And people think, oh, that's all island music. But it wasn't. They played jazz. They oh, played okay. contemporary music. And it was just two uh, musicians, but it was just right for what was happening during that. Fabulous. Yeah. So we that do, is great. We do all kinds of fun group things. That's great. <laughs> is there one that's more memorable than the other? Or, or one that's the, just the memory of it just stands out to you? Well, since I don't go to the actual events, right. um, our musicians would be better to right, answer, answer that. that right. But for me, I remember there was two. One, that the bride switched up her uh, bridal processional from Canon and Dee by right. Pachelbel to Puff the Magic Dragon. Really? On the top of Vail Mountain um, were two classical guitarists. And that one made me cry oh. because Puff the Magic Dragon was a special song to my children. Yeah. And she said, my daddy sang this to me before I went to bed for years and years. Oh. And she wanted to surprise him. And I said, you do realize you're going to be crying yeah. before you get down to the end of the island. She goes, yeah. And I went, done. And so our musicians prepared this secretly. Right came in and played, and I guess it was absolutely lovely. Fabulous! So that's, How wonderful you know, that's, is that? That's one, and then we had another wedding where the, the groom brought in a harp uh -huh. just for the prelude uh -huh. and just for his mother. Uh -huh. And he played a song that was played at his father's memorial who had died something like 25 years before. Uh -huh. And I was on the phone to this young man, I'm going, are you going to make your mama cry? Yeah. And he goes, Yes and no, but this brings my father with me to my wedding. Oh, how I touching. Yes, oh, yes. We, so and so we had this other, uh, uh, a string trio, mm -hmm. but brought in the harp yeah. just for this one song, which took about 15 minutes to play. Yeah. And it was just such a sweetness to include a member of the family that was not with us physically, but could be brought in through the memory. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. So we do something like 120 weddings a year. So you ask right. me what are memorable ones. I'm like, well, I'm never on site, no. but there are a few. <laughs> right, right, right. How beautiful that just they stand out to you because as you were booking them, you know this is a really touching, it emotional, means. meaningful song. Yes. How wonderful. Yeah, so you see I get all the way. Yeah. Yes, and I, all I did was email and talk on the phone. I know, <laughs> it's like that's, that's all great. I, but I love so being beautiful. able to help someone that way. Well, thank you so much. This was truly fabulous, thank Suzanne. You.